I really liked coming up with uh, daily home ranges. And so in the past, you've always heard, you know, there's an annual home range, a seasonal home range, et cetera. Well, we went through and calculated those daily. It was remarkable. I did not expect this. It did not matter what time of year from, say, September till February, the average daily area that a buck was moving was remarkably consistent. Every single week of the year, it was remarkably consistent. It was 200 acres. Now, some are a little bit more and some are a little bit less, but it's, but it's 200 acres. I went in thinking that the daily home range, when it got to be the rut, was going to jump up to 600 acres. But, but that wasn't the story. The story, when we dug into it, was they're still using 200 acres a day during the rut and outside of the rut. The difference is when you look at uh, the location of those 200-acre home range areas, they're further, much, much, much further apart. So out, outside of the rut, non-rut, those 200-acre home ranges, they're overlapping like a rose petal. They're using the same area every day. And then when the rut happens, it's 200 acres over here, 200 acres over here, 200 acres over there. That's how that works. And that contributes too to some of the error we're seeing there in the early rut and peak rut and so forth. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, so the, like the, that next slide, next two slides, the uh, daily temperature uh, at dawn affects morning movement. So ex explain this to me. So y'all isolated the morning hours and then looked at temperature based on that? Yeah. So uh, N Natasha went through and we looked at, you know, the coldest part of the day, and that's usually right, you know, middle of the night, right before sunup, uh, and then looked at how is that temperature at sunup essentially going to affect the, the movement rate that following day. And as you see there, it's kind of the same consistent story, but we go from around 240 yards per hour movement rate and about 30% bedding. And that increases during the cold up to 360 yards per hour and about 25%. So the cold is influencing. However, right here too is just a, a, a crude average. So in this here, we're not really uh, accounting for the, the time of the rut just ah, yet. So, okay. Yeah. So we're just starting big picture and then we're going to boil down to now, big picture on this. So this Bronson, we we talked. I brought this up to you before we get started. Actually, I think we were outside. Yeah, I was. I was about to bring this up <laughs> about me and Andrew talk about this, and we've had some podcast guests agree and others disagree. But it seems like in Alabama, and this is from personal observation, you start getting those temps below 30, 32 degrees. It seems like it's very lackluster morning until kind of later in the morning, sun gets up, burns off the frost, and you see a, a spike activity. Well, on this graph that you have here showing, which ranges from uh, 70 to 85 degrees all the way down to the lowest, which is 20 to 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, that that 20 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit had the most increase in range or movement uh, and also least bedding activity of those four periods, So, which is really interesting because, again, that's something that we were like, oh, man, it doesn't seem like they really move a whole bunch super early um, you know, at that dawn time frame when it's that cold. So it's interesting. You're pulling that data up and these are Southern deer and it seems like that's not correct. <laughs> and, and that's my experience as well is when you have these and let, let's just, uh, I guess kind of average or, or crudely say when you get into the twenties down here, I know our Northern colleagues are yeah. laughing right now, but that's really cold. That's, that's cold. very different. And when you go back through the data, you don't have many of those days to look at. Um, but, that is precisely what I've always experienced. When it's really, really, you get up and you're at the stand and it's 19 degrees, I, I don't see a bunch. But then when the sun comes up and it gets over the treetops and it starts warming things up, I, I see more activity. Uh, my last deer hunt in North Mississippi, that is precisely what happened. I did not see anything until 9 o'clock and it was in the, in the low 20s that morning. But we have to look at those are instances and we got to look at overall with, with the data um, one other thing I was going to sure. ask on, on this specific chart or slide, what are you classifying as, uh, dawn? Like, is this the first hour of daylight that we're looking at right here? 
Uh, well, dawn is sun up, so it's it's the exact amount of time at which the National Weather Service said was sun up, and then we typically go back thirty minutes before that for because that's when le- legal shooting hours are. Okay, so from gray light legal from shooting gray light. Out, shoot, shooting hours until sun up again sunrise uh, is what we're looking at right here right. for this graph. Okay, very right. interesting. But if you want to uh, fast forward a little bit. Um, So just start with the morning. There's a lot of color coding you go on there. The the color of the dot represents that interval of temperature that we're talking about. So we can find some instances if you look in the morning in the pre-rut. So let's start in that yellow area, pre-rut. The dot that is uh, at the highest, in other words, representing the greatest movement, is in that 20 to 32 that morning. Um, if you get on to the early rut though, you see an inconsistent relationship. So you actually have some of the warmer temperatures there during the early rut. You have a greater movement rate associated with that. And then when you get to the peak rut, again, you have an instance to where, uh, they're moving more based on that cold morning, but you still see this general pattern is going on there to where, uh, it's the rut is is what's very, very important. But there's a lot of, you know, talk about signals and consistent signals. You see a few instances there where you think, um, you know, the, the temperature in the morning is really driving that movement rate, and then not as much. Um, during the post-rut, you see the pattern that you would expect. Colder in the morning, you see a little bit. but But then you have to look at the y-axis there. And we're doing yards per hour. And again, a yard, for me, a yard's a step. When I'm pacing, a yard's a step. So when you start coming out over an hour and we've got a five yard per hour difference, that may mean a lot to you. And there are some hunters, I have no doubt, because they've said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, well, that's the odds that he would step out, you know, and get a shot or not. But for me, when you compare that, Outside of the rut and the rut, you can have 200 or more yards per hour difference. And we have some weather where we're only getting five or three or 20. It's not as compelling. Hmm. So there's still something there, but it's it's just not as extreme as what you get from the rut. The five yards per hour or less, that would also be within the margin of error, correct? Because the GPS callers have a 15-yard error or 10, 15 10 yard? to 15. Uh-huh. Okay. So, I mean, essentially, I mean, maybe he moved five more, but it's kind of a wash. Like you don't really know because it's inside the margin of error. Is that correct? Yeah. That, that, that's one way to think about it. Uh, you hope the error, the collar error smooths out because you're getting thousands and thousands of locations. Okay. And so some of them, you may be 10 yards off. Some of them you're dead on. So you just kind of hope that you standardize for that. And when you get an average Mm -hmm. in one instance, it's different from another average that it's not due to collar error, but yeah, that can play into it. 